Okay, we will get started now. So hello everyone. My name is Alexa Dejarle. I'm the student recruitment specialist at the School of Architecture, Planning and Landscape. Welcome to our info session. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you all here. Before we get started, I wanna let you know that the session is being recorded. We would like to acknowledge and pay tribute to the traditional territories of the peoples of Treaty 7, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprising the Siksika, Pikani, and Kainai First Nations, as well as the Tsutina First Nation and the Stony Nakoda, including the Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. By the signing of Treaty 7 in 1877, the university recognizes that we are all treaty people. Today, we will provide an overview of SAPL. Then we'll invite our students from the Master of Architecture, Planning and Landscape Architecture degrees to speak about their programs and experiences. Following the presentations, we'll have a question and answer period until our program ends at 10.30 a.m. Calgary time. If you have a question throughout the presentation, please put it in the chat and then we'll answer those during the Q&A. At SAPL, we offer a distinctly different design school experience. We train the future of positive change makers to develop solutions to some of the world's greatest problems. Our programs are focused on challenge-based learning, building, prototyping, and collaborating with industry. Our rich interdisciplinary design-based philosophy and proven commitment to working with community prepares students for meaningful professional careers. We have five fundamental and guiding principles in our professional programs, community-engaged learning, entrepreneurial mindset, future-focused design, research, and social innovation. SAPL students work closely with the City of Calgary, as well as design and planning firms, arts and advocacy groups, and economic development organizations to affect change. Additionally, we consistently engage with the community through courses, conferences, lectures, workshops, and exhibitions. You can see some examples on this slide. We participated in the 2018 Indigenous Design Symposium, the Gridge Cell, which started as a structure studio, but then evolved into a rooftop installation for the Inventures Conference for Entrepreneurs, and a laboratory for integrative design installation at Beakerhead, an annual week-long arts and science mashup experience that takes place across the city of Calgary. Our research projects leverage the collaboration of academia, industry, and policymaking. They explore ways to increase Calgary's downtown and neighborhood vibrancy while reducing the city's environmental footprint. This provides advanced skill building opportunities and promotes entrepreneurial job creation and economic diversification in Calgary's building and construction industry. Some examples include the 4th Avenue flyover, designing out waste, a large scale prototype working with the international firm 3XN to reuse demolished building parts as end to end circular economy research, and Dean John Brown trying out the uh, alleyway art. We are training the next generation of city builders. Our students are learning how to help create great communities with economic prosperity, vibrant public spaces and green areas, good transportation and safe neighborhoods. We also address how to create a future that is environmentally sustainable, socially equitable and infectious disease resilient. Across the campus, SAPL researchers and students are working to impact the future. Some examples include reimagining the morphology of downtown Calgary, how to design clothing for pandemics and social distancing, and affordable housing solutions. Social innovation and community engagement is embedded into all of our programs. The Advocates for Equity in Design Education, AEDE, is a collective of SAPL students dedicated to providing a safe platform for critical engagement with issues of justice and equity in design, they are working on several initiatives to, that promote the social and political consciousness of the SAPL community. Now I will invite Jennifer, Jen Telefer, Jen Telefer, our academic programs coordinator to tell you more about our research initiatives, programs, facilities, and student supports. Thank you, Alexa. Hello, everyone. The City Building Design Lab, CBDL, is the first and only hub 
and Alberta for research and discussions about entrepreneurial approaches to city building. Our faculty and researchers are focused on producing design-based research, publications, and exhibitions to shape the future of city building. At SAPL, we have over 500 incredible students who are taking our courses from our undergraduate programs and our graduate programs. We offer undergraduate courses for all U Calgary students and also a minor in architectural studies for those students in their third and fourth years. We have, a, we have our graduate professional programs in architecture, planning, and landscape architecture, which you will hear, learn more about today. And finally, we also offer research-based masters and PhD programs in environmental design and a doctor of design. SAPL has a great instructor to student ratio and two locations, our main campus in Northwest Calgary, as well as our newer downtown space, the City Building Design Lab or CBDL, which opened in 2018. Both our Northwest campus and the CBDL have workshops. Our design education includes practical engagement with ideas, people, and systems around the world. Our students have experienced exciting study abroad opportunities in their programs. They have traveled for one week or one semester to locations such as Barcelona, Tokyo, Zurich, Melbourne, Norway, Los Angeles, Boston, and Tijuana. Our study abroad locations are recognized for their expertise areas like growth management, transit-oriented communities, district revitalization, sustainable infrastructure, public space design, and urban design. Participating in these opportunities is a great way to gain an appreciation for interdisciplinarity, sustainability, and culture. A student who recently completed the program said that this travel abroad experience was one of, if not the best experience of my life. Students in all three professional programs have this opportunity during one summer of their program. SAPL endeavors to provide financial support to our students. We offer competitive entrance and continuing scholarships as well as graduate assistantships in teaching and research. These opportunities provide skill building, professional development, and a unique academic experience for our students. The CBDL is a gathering place for leading designers and thinkers from around the world to share knowledge and collaborate with communities through our SAPO lecture series called Design Matters, also with graduate studios and block week courses. SAPO also hosts lunch and learn events to enrich students' learning experiences. Now for the main event, I would like to introduce our wonderful speakers today. First, we will hear from Caleb Dirksen, a senior master of architecture student. Thanks, Caleb. Thank you so much, Jen. Wow, main event that uh, makes me feel so special. Um, hi, I'm Caleb Dirksen. I'm a student here. I'm entering my M2 year, which is the last year of my master's. Uh, before this program, I earned a Bachelor of Arts majoring in history and minoring in architecture. And I did that also at the UC. Um, I've always been passionate about architecture particularly because it, it's, it is something that is so diverse and all encompassing. And I've just always been really excited about, uh, about the possibility of a, a school experience and a work experience that you know every single day I could be learning something totally different or be approached with a totally new challenge. So uh, that's what really excites me about it. Um, the School of Architecture has a very diverse range of faculty members. Oh, sorry, one more thing I should add, add before we go on. Um, and I also did take the uh, U of C minor uh, in architectural studies, and I'll, I'll talk about that a bit later. Um, the School of Architecture has a diverse range of faculty members. Um, many are practicing architects, collaborating with industry, and all are highly invested in creating a strong and involved educational environment. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the time to uh, kind of talk about each member of the faculty, but uh, I'd like to highlight one that has, a, that has made a particular impact on me. Um, the, our dean of architect, our, our associate dean, Catherine Hamill, is someone who has definitely made a profound impact on me and has uh, inspired a lot of my work. She's, uh, she's really funny, she's fantastic, and she has like a very um, critical and thoughtful eye when it comes to design. Like somebody, she'll look at your project, she'll find exactly what's not working, and she'll just reach in and pull it out. Um, and yeah, so uh, fantastic prop. So I, I really encourage everyone here to uh, go to the website to see the rest of the faculty um, and explore the areas of research and see that they really, you know, they really do uh, practice what they preach. Uh, the Master of Architecture program is built to address challenges facing our own built environments across many scales with a curriculum focused on innovation, 
responsiveness, and critical thinking. Students develop design approaches that utilize cutting edge digital tools and prepare to become licensed architects not only in Alberta, but also across North America and the European Union. Um, Saville has two Master of Architecture programs. So you have two choices. You can apply to the three-year program if you have a North American or International Bachelor of Architecture degree, uh, or if your undergrad undergraduate degree is in a discipline other than architecture. Um, or you can apply to the two-year program if you have a pre-professional or professional undergraduate architecture degree that is accredited in North America. Um, and if you're unsure about any of these uh, requirements, I know it's a lot uh, to just uh, have it thrown at you. I, I'd invite you to just contact the admissions team. I think uh, uh, Jen or, or Alex put the link in the chat already. Um, personally, the architecture minor has helped me um, massively. It gave me a, a broad knowledge of the professional practice. Uh, it exposed me to all kinds of different creative methods. Um, it helped me understand areas of architecture that I might be really interested in. Um, but the most important thing I taught, I think it taught me, is that it, it taught me how to be very critical of my own work, how to edit my own work to really achieve something um, that I felt was uh, uniquely special. And another thing that was really great about the uh, the minor program is that it helped me to create a really strong portfolio to uh, to apply to the uh, the two year program with. Um, so moving on, uh, studio. Studio is kind of the core of uh, studio is the core activity of the architecture program. Uh, these are just some different examples of of beautiful student work from different studios. So each term in the master's program has a studio and then the studio work kind of progresses in scale. Um, so each term kind of it gets, it, you know, it encompasses more, it grows in scale. Um, and then studio instructors and topics change every year. So uh, you always get a chance to experience um, new things, new people, different pers perspectives. Um, so it's, it, it is always like, it, it always pushes you to um, grow. Um, and then, but unique to uh, the second year of the master's program uh, is uh, the newly uh, created work integrated studios, which are designed to take advantage of uh, this particular moment in history where our uh, enforced physical distance has reinforced the need to creatively design the ways we interact and collaborate with designers across the globe. So this, uh, these studios connects teams of students, faculty members, researchers, and uh, architectural practitioners to address challenges facing our communities, our cities. Um, and this creates a really valuable opportunity for collaboration uh, between um, university and industry. Um, personally, I haven't gotten my, uh, my studio placement yet. I'm still waiting to see uh, where I'm put. I'm really hoping to uh, work with the architecture firm Dialogue, who's doing a lot of really interesting work um, using augmented reality, virtual reality, using digital fabrication. Um, so that's something that uh, I'd really like to get into. We'll see how it shakes out. But um, And then finally, uh, Sapple offers a wide variety of electives to encourage curi curiosity in different subjects. Uh, this last year, I had the opportunity to take the Gilmore Theory Seminar as a part of my Block Week course. Uh, so this particular course uh, was all about creating what we call a people's archive of Calgary, uh, an archive that visualizes the city in an alternative, alternative bottom-up way. So we interviewed um, women who had recently immigrated to Calgary and we used their experiences to create these uh, maps of the city which were included in this archive. Um, and it was all about, you know, how, to, how do we include stories that uh, often aren't seen in official records? Thank you so much. Thanks, Kayla. Now we will hear from Christine Berger, who is starting her second and final year of our Master of Planning program. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, Jen. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Christine, and I'm a second year planning student. So to start, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I majored in urban studies at U of C before working for a couple of years in planning and development for a small urban municipality in Alberta. Um, and I originally started my undergrad in chemistry before realizing I wasn't super passionate about it. And I started thinking about things I was a little bit more interested in. 
Um, so I've always loved traveling and a couple of trips really stood out to me. So visiting Italy was one of my favorite experiences to date. And I also really loved New York when I visited. Um, a trip to Phoenix also stood out to me, but for the wrong reasons, unfortunately. Um, I really didn't love the city because also the trip was spent in our rental car driving to each destination. And anyone who knows me knows that I'm not amazing with directions. So since every street looked the exact same to me, I was constantly lost. <laughs> um, but I started to realize how important urban planning was in shaping people's experiences and perceptions of a city. So I transferred my major to urban studies to learn more about the theory behind my observations. And seven years later, I'm still enjoying learning about urban planning. Um, so we can go into a little bit about the MPLAN faculty next. And I'm not sure if there should be a slide change there, sorry, or if it's just slow on my end. Um, but the MPLAN program has provided me with a whole new perspective about planning. Um, I was more focused on theory and bylaws before, but the design approach of the program has been really refreshing and it's an interesting way to learn more about this field. Uh, I especially enjoyed our winter studio last year where we designed a greenfield community on the northwest edge of Calgary. We got to familiarize ourselves with the current situation as well as make predictions about the future and then plan based on these predictions. At the end of the term, there were some pretty interesting projects. So one focused on sustainable urban agriculture, a couple focused on preserving nature while strategically developing certain areas that were not environmentally sensitive. Um, as environmentally sensitive. And so it was really interesting. Um, but this faculty has so many talented professors who are interested in their students' work and perspectives. Um, so I'm especially interested in environmental sustainability. So landscape and uh, landscape ecology and planning, um, which was taught by Mathis Mathic last year, was particularly noteworthy to me. Um, Mathis has a wealth of ecological knowledge and a passion for his work that's honestly really inspiring. And understanding urban ecology is really important in developing sustainable cities, and I really think that we're going to see its importance in the coming years. So things like green roofs, bioswales, and pollinator gardens will likely become much more popular and crucial as we face urban challenges that come with climate change. Uh, so that was just one class and one professor that really stood out to me. but. They're amazing and I would recommend you get to know them all here. Um, so moving on now to what sets this program apart from others. Uh, the MPLAN program is characterized by form-based planning, which involves design and graphic skills that enable SAPL MPLAN students to understand and communicate the connection between policy and planning decision and the spatial forms they create on the ground. In my experience, form-based planning is extremely important and it's gaining tractions in, traction in municipalities across North America. So for example, I worked at the town of High River, which adopted a hybrid bylaw in 2017. Um, and this mixes land use-based practices with form-based planning. Uh, the traditional is mostly land use planning. Um, but the form-based nature of the bylaw allowed for a shift from segregating land uses to encouraging flexible, sustainable developments that could house a variety of uses um, now and in the future. And it allows for compact development with more amenities. Uh, the city of Calgary is also taking steps to focus less on land use and more on form. And this just shows the importance and pertinence of what SAPL is teaching. So similar to the MARC program, MPLAN offers block weeks, selectives and electives to complete the degree. So a little bit more info about the program setup. There is a studio in each term of the MPLAN program, so that's five studios in total. These studios will include all scales of planning from urban to regional. Uh, the first semester starts with a bit smaller scale site projects and winter studio covers a larger area at the community scale. And spring is a little bit of both. You start by analyzing the entire site and then you hone in on a specific spot you believe has the greatest potential to transform the area. Uh, the final project is also notable. It's a comprehensive capstone project in the final term of the planning degree. I personally don't yet know what I'll be investigating, but I do feel confident through year one of this degree that I've developed the skill set I'll need to successfully complete the project. Um, honestly, first year is really challenging, but it's also extremely rewarding. I can do so many things now that I never thought I would learn. Um, and yeah, designing may be difficult, but it's also really fun and really gratifying. 
So I think that wraps up what I have to say and I hope this info has helped. Thanks guys. Great, thanks so much, Christine. Now we will hear from Zoe Crandell, our Senior Master of Landscape Architecture student. Thanks, Zoe. Hi guys. Um, so we're moving on to the landscape architecture portion, um, which if you're listening in, interested in the landscape, congratulations, you've picked the best uh, option to do. Uh, no offense anybody else, but um, so I have a Bachelor of Science in Biology um, and I've always really loved nature. I'm a big nature nut, um, really passionate about um, ecology, landscape ecology and evolutionary biology. Um, but I was also always very interested in creativity and legislation and kind of more practical um, applications to um, solving these kind of issues that I'm really interested in. Um, and I was originally actually admitted into the Master of Planning program here, um, but in my first studio, I, I had never heard of landscape really before I had been in that studio, but I absolutely fell in love with the discipline. Um, and I switched over and I haven't looked back since. Um, and I found that this program is really rewarding. I've developed some crazy new skills that I never thought I would ever have. Um, and part of that is due to our really amazing faculty that we have in this program. Um, everyone that we're, are, that has taught any courses that I've taken has a really diverse perspective on landscape or they come from a different background, even different parts of the world. So you get a really diverse mix of uh, opinions and things that they get to teach you. Um, one studio course that I really enjoyed, I've enjoyed them all, but one uh, was with Enrica Dellara. She is from Italy and she has the most elegant, thoughtful approach to design. And she really gives the most considered, detailed feedback when you're having um, a course with her. So she's really kind of guided me through a lot of this. And I found that I've really improved um, from working with her. So moving on to programs. So landscape architects provide innovative solutions to environmental and urban challenges, processes and forms in ecology, urbanization, land use and social dynamics are explored through core courses, study abroad opportunities and intense special topic courses with experts. Um, so we have two master of landscape architecture programs. You have a three-year program if you have an undergraduate degree in something other than landscape architecture, that's what I did. So I'm in my uh, M2 year, which is my final year, my third year here. Um, or you can apply to the two-year program if you have a pre-professional or professional undergraduate landscape architecture degree that is accredited in North America. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're very confused, um, just contact our admissions team. Um, I think their email address will be in the chat. So there is a studio in each term. Um, and like Caleb was mentioning, studio is our big chunk of what you get to do here at the program. Um, each studio, you get to explore a different area um, and address different kinds of challenges. Some focus more on time scales, some focus more on ecology, some focus more on whatever you want to do. Um, so you really get to explore all sorts of different aspects, put your fingers in all sorts of different pies. Um, the picture down there with the pink girl, I did that one in Enrica's studio. Um, that, so that one was um, more of an urban studio. So it was in Inglewood in Calgary. Um, and while a lot of my classmates did totally different stuff, I really focused on signage um, and kind of expressing the, the uh, community language through signs in that area. So that was really cool. Um, and you don't just do urban studios, you also get to do um, natural environments, more ecological environments. So like Chris Fox's studio, we got to do uh, some really rural landscapes, which is cool. So what do you get to do after <laughs> you complete your Master of Landscape Architecture or any of our other programs? Um, that's a question I'm asking myself, but I know from uh, the experiences that I've had that 
especially with landscape, there is so much you can do after you graduate. Um, landscape architects work in ecological functions for nonprofits like the Nature Conservancy of Canada. They work for private firms doing more um, urban design, parks, public space kind of thing. There's residential or um, uh, more civil engineering types of landscape architects or she might work for more of an engineering kind of perspective. Um, we're really generalists, so I really feel like the sky is the limit um, for us once we graduate. Can work anywhere you want. <laughs> Thanks, Zoe. I don't know, Caleb and Christine, if you wanted to talk about your future career plans or kind of what you're interested in, which path you might go or you're not sure yet, just kind of give us a feel for that. Sure, I can. Uh, um, my future career plans, I mean, uh, like Zoe just said, like we, we really are generalists, like we really can go in any dir direction and fit in almost anywhere. Uh, personally, I don't really uh, know where I want to go, but like, it is nice to know that I really could go anywhere. I mean, architects work in, you know, any kind of like typical construction that you're familiar with, but then architects also, a lot of people who are trained in architecture go on to work in like um, film and um, CGI and animation and public sculpture and whatever. So it's, I don't know, it's, uh, I could, I don't know where I'm going to go. <laughs> I have a similar answer. I'm not 100% sure yet, but um, I worked in a municipality for two and a half years, I guess, and I really did enjoy that. It's it's really interesting to kind of, you get to work with private firms and you're a little bit like involved in the process of picking what firm best represents, like what your, your municipality needs at the time when you do have um, applications for projects. So it's really fun to be a part of that and to decide how your future of your your municipality will be shaped um, and what's important to it. And then you get to stick around to see the results. Um, I do think private development is really rewarding as well. Um, private planning companies, you get to actually design things and be involved in that process. Um, so I think, yeah, maybe a little bit more private experience because I don't have that before. I really enjoy the municipality. So unless I fall in love with private, then I, I might go back to municipal government. But that's sort of my plan. But again, like everybody said, there are so many options for planning. You can go into so many different fields and so many related fields. And your experience, like something you'll hear a lot if you do go into planning is that you're a jack of all trades. And it's very true. You kind of do everything yourself and you get to do something new each day. Um, so if you're somebody who gets bored by doing the same thing over and over, again, a lot of planning jobs won't be like that. There are a few that will be kind of applications over and over again, but for the most part, um, you're always finding a new, like you're always problem solving, finding a new um, solution to different problems that come up. And it's, it's really fun and really rewarding. And you get to actually shape people's lives as well. So that's, that's something that's really cool. Thank you. Thank all of you, Caleb, Christine, and Zoe, for your presentations and your insight. This has been really cool and inspiring. So um, if you're interested in learning more about SAPL, our programs, research projects, or student work, you can sign up for our newsletter, uh, follow us on social media, or read about our news stories on the website. For those of you who are ready to apply to SAPL, our application portal will be opening next week on September 1st. You can submit an online application for form and then follow the supporting document requirements on our website to make sure you have a complete application. If you're in the process of preparing for your application, we invite you to attend our other information sessions throughout the fall. We will have students and alumni share their experience at SAPL as well as some portfolio review sessions where you can get kind of more one-on-one -on -one feedback on the work you're putting together and some open houses to showcase our facilities. You can find more information and registration pages on our website. And finally, if you have questions, you can always email us or you can attend our drop-in Ask SAPL sessions that will be happening every month. We're happy to answer questions and provide guidance through the application process. Lastly, we want to thank everyone for coming to our information session. We hope that you've enjoyed learning more about our student experience and then faculty and programs. Um, we've dropped a one-question survey into the chat. If you could please complete it, we'd really appreciate it.
Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Jen. Uh, we've arrived at our question and answer period. So um, if you have a question and you want to ask it live and in person, you can uh, use the Zoom button to raise your hand and then I'll call on you to ask your question. Alternatively, if you're unable to uh, say your question aloud verbally, then send it into the chat and I'll read it for you. Um, so we already have our first question in. Uh, so Braden, why don't you unmute yourself and go right ahead. Um, hi, yes. Uh, I think I tried to ask this or I may have asked this earlier, but I wanted to ask it with more students here. I am coming from a background that's not necessarily traditional. I'm, I have a bachelor of music and I'm wondering what is like, I, I'm familiar, you know, I've familiarized myself with the process, but just like, is what more does someone with a non-traditional background have to do or have to demonstrate, uh, have to, how would they apply themselves if they want to be successful? Caleb, do you want to maybe? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Zoe. You go first. Oh no, Caleb's is also very non-traditional. Um, <laughs> but as so, I I would say you'll be fine. <laughs> it's my first thing. You will be fine. I promise. When I came into my first year, I had no idea how to use Photoshop. I didn't know how to use AutoCAD. I didn't know about design process. Like I was completely blank slate, didn't know anything about the specifics of the program that I was entering. Um, but I also have friends that were in criminology or other kind of more humanity art fields that also didn't know these things. And we all really caught up really fast, um, caught up to people who had backgrounds in those kind of um, disciplines that you might think are more traditional um, backgrounds for entering to the program. Um, yeah, I think the, the school does a really, really good job of making sure that everyone has a level playing field, at least by the end of your first year. So you're good. You're good. I promise. <laughs> okay. Um, and I guess just a sort of super duper quick uh, uh, part two of that is a lot of my creative work is audio based. So I've worked on sound design stuff. I've worked on a lot of projects here and there some even for the cbc and how do i share that how do i like it's not necessarily a visual stuff but it's project based it's there's a design process there's all of that stuff so how would i how would i go about sharing something that's not necessarily visual i think for your portfolio um I mean, we, we usually advise not to have too much text in your portfolio because you have to keep in mind the reviewers are going through so many of these. Um, but I think probably a bit more of a description of what your projects are. And um, if you do have anything, like even links to things that will be sound based, not visual, um, you know, and just explain what, what you're doing and what your experience is. Um, I think that will help, you know, give them a feel for it. And, and as a musician, obviously you're creative. So you know, there must be other ways that you can show some things visually, but I think you should include the things that are more um, about sound and your background in sound design. So, I mean, you don't want to do like text, like a whole bunch of pages of written no. descriptions, but try, you can probably use more than normal applicants would who don't have, or do that all have everything that's visual. So I don't know. I think, does that help at all? Like, I just, I think yeah. you want to display that you want to demonstrate it and include it for sure. So but you, you mentioned portfolio reviewers may not have time but would they have enough time to listen to like a they short, would, like a yeah. two, three We've had kind of... musicians apply before and they do, they take a listen um, because they have to, because that's what you're offering and that's where you're coming from. So they're not going to ignore you because you're having those types of examples. They definitely gotcha. would listen and read. Yeah. Thank you. Can I, can I speak to that too a little bit, if that's okay? Please. Um, I would say firstly, like, I mean, having that kind of range in your portfolio is awesome. I know like when I was doing my review sessions, uh, one of the big things they said is like there it's not about like it's not about coming to the table with you know here's my uh my 20 renders and my 10 floor plans or whatever like it's about like you showing that creative range um so i think that's incredible like to have that kind of creative range like already before you start that's excellent also i would say that like i think you're actually maybe i think you're thinking you're behind the curve but i think you're kind of ahead of the curve because um, everything I'm seeing in design now is so much more than just like um, 
uh, like page based, like everything's digital, everything's films, everything's websites, everything's like, um, you know, uh, augmented, whatever. Like, it's just like, you know, like having a medium that isn't strictly like, you know, just on a page, I think it's like actually gives you um, an advantage going to this program. Does that kind of make sense? Gotcha. Thank you. Great. Okay. Thank you all. Um, we did have a question about the portfolio uh, review sessions that are going to be coming up. So we do have these. Um, they will be in October and our signups will be live on our website very shortly. So I would say, please keep checking back. Um, but they are, they're, they're going to be great. I think we're going to have multiple sessions as well. So uh, make sure that you register as soon as possible when those links go live, because I know that these uh, sessions fill up. Um, does anyone have any comments about that? Did anyone have their portfolio reviewed uh, before applying or anything like that? No? Oh. Oh, no. no. Okay, great. All right, well, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll keep going with the questions. And if anyone else has a question, please feel free to ask it at this time. Oh, awesome. So we have another one that's come in. How do these three uh, major master programs, uh, like how are they, how can they be differentiated? Uh, someone coming from a creative background, what factors can determine which discipline would best suit this person amongst the three programs? Students, do you have anything to offer there? <laughs> I mean, I'll always talk, so. <laughs> Please go ahead. You guys have to like jump ahead of me if you wanna, you wanna say something. Um, no, so I think it really is just what interests you. Um, I think that really all of these fields benefit from people who have different backgrounds and um, interests and uh, perspectives on things. Um, I don't think that anything that nothing predetermines what you're going to be good at or what you'll find success in. I, I, I really would say that I would probably go online and find a lot of projects and each one kind of see what the current professional work that is going out is, um, what the job opportunities are for after graduation in each of these fields. Um, especially for some of the, I, I know, architecture and landscape architecture, accreditation app, professional, getting your professional designation after you graduate varies from place to place. So it depends where you want to work. Um, but yeah, I would say definitely check out the current work that's going out in each field to kind of give you an idea of what, what areas you are interested in working in. That was amazing. I might add to that quickly, just to say you don't you don't necessarily have to limit yourself to just one of these degrees too. There's a lot of um, professionals out there that have both a, a planning and landscape architecture background. Um, and I know that really helps them to just have a very well-rounded viewpoint and um, get to work on a lot of different kinds of projects. And yeah, and you can always switch to, like Zoe said, um, if you realize a different program is more suited to you once you're into it. Um, but yeah, exactly what Zoe, Zoe said, just take a look at future job opportunities and what you're interested in and yeah. Okay, awesome, thank you. Um, and then this one probably a bit more for Jen, but is it possible that we can, or that these prospective students can interact with our current Sapple students more and maybe get some tips on applications before submitting? Yes, for sure. We, um, we're setting up some student volunteers and it might include these three or it might not, <laughs> but we will have some current students who will be happy to give you some feedback, kind of mentor you through the process. Um, we also have recent alumni who are, will be helping us out as well. So the best thing to do is to email us and um, we can connect you. Great. Okay. So any other questions can be put in the chat box or you can raise your hand and you can ask it live. Oh, yeah. Braden, go right ahead. <laughs> Sorry to hog. Uh... The um, study abroad, I'm interested in study abroad. Um, 
how does it work? Because I, I looked at the core sequencing and I saw at the end of the, and, I, and some people that were here were also here on Wednesday when I asked some of these questions too. But uh, study abroad, how, what's the process to getting with, involved with that when you're a student? And um, have any of you done a study abroad? And how has it affected your design language or your process? Do you want I, me to speak first to the process? Or Christine, you want to talk about it first? <laughs> no, I was just going to say maybe Jen would be the best person to answer this. Unfortunately, with COVID, I know everybody who started last year didn't have a chance to do study abroad, unfortunately. But yeah, for sure. It's basically it's um, we have we hold an information session every fall when when we think travel is possible and it should be. We're aiming for 2022 to be OK. Um, so it's all laid out for you, like the budget, the, the locations that are going that year, um, how you how you register. So um, and basically there's either term long ones. So the whole summer and you actually go and take your University of Calgary courses there in that location. So you pay your normal tuition at the University of Calgary, but you go there and take them there with local um, instructors. Um, or else we have the ones that are more like they have six weeks versions of them. Like Zurich is usually a six week. Uh, excursion so it's a intercession they call it in the spring or we have the one week block weeks that are like at Los Angeles or the other like uh, cities that we've done before and hopefully we'll introduce some new ones um, occasionally it has to come to a lottery if we can't take everyone who wants the one same location it's so rare that that happens typically everybody gets their choice um, and that's usually for the big um, semester long ones so, um, but yeah, literally it's, you know, if you're in academic, good academic standing, you got all the information, you're prepared, the budget works for you, you know, you're going to have an opportunity to choose the one you want. Um, and, and we do have so many students that just say, like change their lives and they had such an amazing experience and change their perspectives. And, you know, it's really exciting opportunity. So, and for, I don't, I don't think any of these guys have even done the week long ones. Zoe, did you do anything? No. Did you go any week long ones? No. No, to Zurich. No, yeah, <laughs> so we don't, just because of COVID, we've had this interruption, unfortunately. Um, so, but I could even connect you with some students that have gone on them. If, if you want a bit more background from a student's perspective, just let me know, send us an email. I, I would add that we are also having an alumni session. So we'll be talking with people who graduated from the program and some of those student or past students may have experienced student uh, study abroad. So you may want to sign up and attend that and then you can ask questions and maybe their classmates have done it as well. Okay, so we have another question here. Have any of you worked during the semester? Is it possible or difficult with the course load? Um, I would say it is both possible and difficult. Uh, I've worked during my first two years here, or my yeah, my my foundation year and then my M one year. Um, you can definitely do it, um, but it's just uh, it everything just takes a lot of time. So that's just the reality of it. I would just add to that. Um, I also have worked while I've been. Um, at Sapl, um, and I've worked both within the faculty, so as a uh, research, research assistant, as well as outside the faculty. I would say that the really important part that you need to kind of discuss with whoever's employing you is that during studio review weeks and things where a bunch of deadlines are popping up, you're going to have to like you're gonna have to be like hey I need to take a little moment away from work and really concentrate on school because the course loads are pretty heavy um and it depends on the semester and it depends who you are and how good you are at managing everything um but yeah I think having your employer aware that you're a master's student um would be very very helpful for you <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, while we wait just to see if any other questions come in, I just want to remind everyone that I just popped into the chat the next info session information. We'll be doing a how-to portfolio session with uh, faculty, and we'll talk more about Studio and the different topics and how it works at SAPL. Um, so if you have a chance, please make sure that you register for that one. Um, 
and yeah, it'll be a whole host of new people that you'll hear from from Sapo. Um, and we just, yeah, I think what we'll do now is just wrap up. Um, you can always make sure that you email us. Uh, if you have any questions, you can attend our next info sessions. We'll also have an open house. So you can um, attend that to learn more about our facilities. Um, and we wanna thank our speakers again today. You did wonderful. It was so great to have your perspective as a student. Um, and I wanna thank everyone here for attending and for your engagement and questions. Um, it's so important and it helps other people because usually people have the same questions. So thank you so much. Um, and yeah, so thanks everyone. And we'll end the session here today. Thanks everyone.